say five to ten seconds after meeting him. <laughs> However, luckily, there was someone much worse out there. And unfortunately, I had to meet him too, and it's Scott Corkin. He's up next. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sushi. I, I don't really know what to make of uh, Chris. I don't really know him that well. I had him at one of my shows, and uh, I said I told him I'd love to have him back. He said uh, he'll come back once he finds out what's so funny about animal rape. <laughs> That's easy. Everything. <laughs> it's not the actual rape of it. It's a true story. True story. Not the actual rape of it. Just ribald tales of the fictional rape of animals. I was talking to people who say, yeah, Chris, he's just like straight-laced, yada, yada, yada. But, you know, I knew some people like Chris when I was at Clemson. You know, there's a lot of military people there and a shit ton of Christians. So, uh, you devoted your life to the Prince of Peace. Hmm. And after college, professional hired killer. Oh. Oh, but you'll be flying planes and only be killing the bad people and everyone else within 100 feet. <laughs> who would Jesus bomb? Those dirty Muslims squatting on top of our damn oil, that's who. <laughs> but it's something about these straight-laced people, you know? Um, I, I know a lot of straight-laced, none of your blue humor for me, thank you people, and there's always something really dark and fucked up they're hiding. And the more straight-laced they are, the more weird and fucked up their secret is. I don't know what Sushi's secret is. <laughs> does, he, does he have a band named Free Candy? <laughs> Stay in a week in a fleet French maid outfit and a dildo helmet? I don't know. Not sure I want to know. I know my buddy Chris over here, you know, he went to prison lately and he said, Oh, everybody was worried about me in prison sex. But not me. I wasn't worried about it. Now, if they locked him up in the zoo, that would be a different story. I'm sure there'd be lots of non-consensual monkey love. I'm not sure who'd be pitching or who'd be catching. I mean, uh, maybe he uses brains to fight his way up to the top of the monkey gang. Or more likely, he'd just be using his humor to persuade Bobo to give him a reach around. Or maybe use some monkey lube. <laughs> yeah, it's bananas and uh, something else. <laughs> What's monkey poop? It's bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Keeling, I see you still working on the touching tan. I saw this new thing on the internet you might be uh, interested in. It's like speed dating. It's called speed masturbating. <laughs> And uh, he had this new, uh, his new record, The Conquistador. He made the uh, brutal genocide of the Native Americans in South America. Hilarious! Hilarious! <laughs> and that fires him up! We tortured him, converted, then murdered him! <laughs> now, Thomas, so there'd be you know, the easy route to make some kind of racial joke about Thomas. But that's not really the most interesting thing about Thomas. Do you know what's the most interesting thing about him? <coughs> that was not a rhetorical question. I don't know. <laughs> MJ, I don't know too much about MJ either. Do you have a picture of your mother by any chance? Is by any, maybe she's overweight or something? Or poor? Or ugly? I hope so, otherwise I got nothing. <laughs> James, he did a bit about his, uh, his like my last show, a bit about his uh, best friend, his girlfriend in the three-way, while his girlfriend was sitting right there, and his best friend married a psycho ex, and now they decided to do three, three ways with his girlfriend. He's invented a new genre of comedy, method comedy. <laughs> I told him I needed a headshot for the next uh, flyer, and he had texted me a picture of his dick. <laughs> There's my buddy Raph, noted homosexual. Uh, and then there's Melly, oh cute little Melly. And she and you know, then she's got the two adorable little dogs. What is it? Twitchy and, and jitters or whatever, I don't know. And she she's like, oh and she just pampers them. It's like peanut butter seven times a day. <laughs> built a dog door in her panties. <laughs> oh, and she 
Shane Gray, Shane Gray. Actually, I, Chris got me here under false pretenses. He told me Shane was dead. <laughs> I brought my dancing shoes, nowhere to go. Oh, shit. It severely handicapped my preparation of remarks in the evening, noting society's prohibition of speaking ill of the dead. My material would have fit on like a whole business card. <laughs> I was gonna say that he was like, Savannah's Jerry Lewis. He was gonna be so appreciated in uh, France after his death that they would name a food after him, the douche baguette. <laughs> I've heard Shane's uh, comedy called uh, comedy called Intellectual Masturbation, but I don't think it's that intellectual. In fact, his will, his uh, wits as dry as grandma's cunt, <laughs> and as uh, sharp as her gums. <laughs> but who doesn't like grandma gumming? Now, for the final thing in Shane, I, uh, I prepared a dramatic reading. Now, most people, when you think of a dead person, you prepare a reading from the Bible, but for Shane, it's a reading from William Burroughs' Naked Lunch. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the man who taught his asshole to talk? His whole abdomen would move up and down, you dig, farting out words. It was just unlike anything I'd ever heard. That asshole talk had some kind of a gut frequency, hits you right down there like you gotta go. You know, the old colon gives you the elbow and you feel kind of cold inside. And you know something's about to turn loose. Well, this hit you right down there. A bubbly, thick, stagnant sound. A sound you could smell. <laughs> this man worked for a carnival. You did start out with a novelty Vitrocos act. Real funny to it first, he called it. The better ole. That was a scream, I tell you. I forget most of it, but it was clever, like... Oh, were you still down there, old thing? No, I had to go relieve myself. After a while, the asshole started to talk on its own. It would go in without anything prepared. The asshole would ad-lib and toss gags back all the time. It developed sort of teeth-like, raspy, incurving hooks and started to eat. He thought it was cute at first and built an act around it. This is the part that part of the shame. The asshole would eat its way through his pants and then start talking on the street, shouting at one equal rights. It would get drunk too and go on crying jags and nobody loved it. And it wouldn't be kissed the same as any other mouth. And finally, it talked all day and all night. You could hear it for blocks screaming for it to shut up and beat it with his fist and sticking candles in it. But nothing did any good. The asshole said to him, It is you who will shut up in the end, not me, because we don't need you around here anymore. I can talk and eat and shit. And then he began, walking, began waking up in the morning covered in transparent jelly like tadpoles tail all over his mouth. The jelly was what scientists call UNDT, undifferentiated tissue, which can grow into any kind of flesh on the human body. He would tear it off his mouth and pieces would stick to his hands like burning gasoline and grow there, grow anywhere on him that a glob fell. And finally his mouth was sealed over and his whole head would have to be amputated spontaneously, except for the eyes you dig. That's one thing the asshole couldn't do is see. It needed eyes. But the nerve connections were blocked and infiltrated and atrophied, so the brain couldn't give orders anymore. It was trapped in the skull, sealed off. For a while you could see the silent, helpless suffering of the brain locked behind those eyes, like Shane's eyes. And finally the brain went out and died because those lights and those eyes went out. And there was no more feeling in them than a crab's eye at the end of a stalk. Shane, love you, buddy. I'm almost positive William S. Burroughs is spinning in his grave, even though he's still alive. <laughs> All right.